Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be starting with the properties of cosets. There are so many properties of cosets. Let's study them one by one. So here, if we have G as our group, right? And for this group, we have H as the subgroup. Then in that case, if we take any two elements A and B from G, what can we have as different properties with us? So the first property here tell us that uh, this the coset which is generated by multiplying the elements of the subgroup H by this element A which has been taken from the group G, right? If th this is our sub coset here, for this coset, this coset will definitely contain the element wi uh, which is used in order to generate this coset, right? So the represent coset representative would definitely be present in this uh, coset, right? So the left coset of H containing A does contain A, correct? So this is the first property and the proof is also very simple. Here, we know the element A could be written as A into E and you know this E is a member of H so therefore you can write this AE as the member of A into capital H this coset AH right why because this coset is constructed from all such elements A multiplied with small h such that this H is taken from the subgroup H right and clearly you know identity is present in each of the subgroups so therefore uh, this element a is present in a h and hence a is present in a h and this is what we wanted to prove here in as our first property let's move on to our second property it tell us that uh, the coset a h this is equal to the subgroup itself whenever we have the element a as the member of that particular subgroup so the element which is used to generate the coset if that element is present within h only then this a h is nothing but the subgroup itself so this h this property is used in uh, algebraic calculations in such a way that if you have some element a which is present in h then whenever you encounter this thing a h so you can write it just h why because they both of them they are equal so we also say that this h this absorbs an element uh, or uh, right so here a is being absorbed by h and when would this thing would appear whenever we have this element belonging to h only right so this is the property here the proof of this property is also very simple let's have a look at our proof here we first of all here we wanted to prove the if and only if part so we have to prove the result in both ways so first of all let us consider a h is equal to h and we will prove that this a belongs to h right so here obviously you can write this a as a into e the identity element and because of this reasoning here this a e would definitely be present in a h and in this case we are assuming a h to be equal to h so therefore this a e would be present in h right if that is so this a would also be present in h and this is what we wanted to prove as one part of the result now for the converse part we assume that this a h is uh, a is present in H, right, the subgroup H, and we wanted to prove that A H is equal to H. So here we assume that this A is a member of H. We wanted to prove A H is equal to H. So for that, what we do, we pr for proving this thing, we prove first of all the containment that A H is contained in H, and then the converse containment that H is contained in E H. If this is so then uh, if both the conditions they are true simultaneously then obviously both of them have to be equal so this is what our this is what we wanted to prove here and this is our aim so for the first inclusion here what we do we will prove that some element from here is present here right now here because we know a is a member of h so therefore according to the closure property you know h is a subgroup so all the group properties would be satisfied by this h also 
so in this case we would say the closure property also holds and uh, if you take some element small h from this subgroup capital H then by the closure property because a is also in H small h is also in H so their multiplication is also present in this H right if this multiplication is present in H for all such H so that means a h is contained in h right so we prove one part of the result for the next inclusion what we wanted to prove we wanted to prove this h is contained in a h so what we do we take some element h here and we prove that this is also present in a h so let's consider small h from h right now because it is known to us that a is also contained in h and h is we are taking this h from h so that means because H is a subgroup, so we have this element uh, A inverse H present in H, right, according to the subgroup properties. And if this element is present in H, so now we wanted to prove H belongs to A H. So let's see how we can make that thing. So let's start with this H. We wanted to prove that this belongs to A H. So we may write this H as E H. Now we may write this E as A A inverse, there is no issue. Then according to the associative property, we can just adjust the bracket. So it would be A A inverse H and A inverse H, this whole member is already present in H and we are multiplying it by some element A. So therefore, whole of this element is present in A of H. So we started with H and we reached at A H. So that means uh, and this H was taken initially from where? This was taken from capital H. So therefore, this capital H is contained in A of H for all H, right? Now you have both the containments, this one and this one. So therefore, uh, we have A H as equal to H, right? So this is the proof of this property. Okay, moving forward on to our next property. This is also very simple. And it tells us that uh, the left coset of H when we have the element a b with us this is equal to the left coset of h with b right multiplied with a and moreover the right coset uh, of h by the generated by the element a b this is equal to the right coset of h with a multiplied with b right so in words it is the left coset of h created by multiplying h on the left hand side of a this thing is the same as the coset created by multiplying h on the left by b so that means this this much portion and then multiplying the resulting coset bh on the left by a right so multiplying this thing with this thing and the similar statement is there for this portion also so the proof of this result is also very easy right for the proof what we need to prove here we need to prove both the results now what we do we can take some element h from the subgroup h so according to this we may write a b multiplied with this small h so a b multiplied with small h that would obviously be equal to you can adjust the brackets here there is no issue a into b h why because we have the property of associativity with us right so this proves the first result because this thing is true for for all such h which are taken from the subgroup capital H and similarly for the second result we may consider the element small h multiplied with a b right so this thing would become we can again adjust the brackets according to the associative property so we may have h a into b because h a and b all are elements of g right so therefore all the group axioms would be satisfied over there so this things both the both of these equations they are true for each of the h which are which is a member of the subgroup h so therefore according to associative property our result is proved here so i hope you understood these properties well well that is it for this video thank you for watching